16. Chuck, uh, let's go. And uh, get Chuck's opinion on him. Chuck Hollis, as, as many of you know, is a prolific blogger. How you doing, Chuck? Great to see you. Always a pleasure. Uh, and not, not just a blogger and a writer, a great thinker, somebody who uh, really has a pulse on technology. He can articulate it well, uh, translate technology into business value. Uh, on a good day, Chuck's a guy that uh, talks to a lot of CIOs, a lot of customers, a lot of internal people. Um, you got a lot going on. Chuck started the social media efforts at EMC, what seems to be like, well, yeah, I guess in social media terms, decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it, and, worked. Uh, yeah it worked. It worked. Right. Well Chuck, done. We were, Chuck, we were talking um, earlier. You're getting a lot of uh, traffic on your blog. You're well known in the circles. Um, and uh, you talk a lot. You get called in as the guru for customers. Um, you've been, how many meetings so have you had? It's a little scary. It's a little scary, isn't like, it? You get pulled into this stuff. It's like, <laughs> you really want to talk to me? <laughs> Where's Chuck this week? You have, need as, him. <laughs> you have, as I say in the Irish world, a good rap. Yeah, you know, good rap. Good rap. Good and you rap. have a good rap. So we're talking about, the, our rap here today is the sizzle and steak going on at, at DMC World. The sizzle is big data. Yep. And, the, and the steak is the deployment of you know, virtualization in the cloud and stuff that's in, 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 the, in the trenches. Um, so Dave, sizzle. Big data. Big data is hot. So he, he defined big data. Big data. So what is big data? Well, yeah, let's ask Chuck because uh, I've heard some decent definitions, but Chuck, you always have a really um, crisp way of articulating these things. I suppose there's all different ways to define it, but what I see it as a change in mindset from data being a bad thing, from IT being a bad thing to, oh my God, if we assemble all this information together, we can make a lot of money. Sorry. If we assemble all this data together, we can make a lot of money and actually create a lot of value. And if you look at most traditional IT thinking, it's, oh my God, we've got to get rid of our data, we've got to lower IT costs, those damn users, what do they want? Big data IT is different. It's about value generation, whether it's finding a cure to cancer or discovering a new insight in buying behavior. It's a whole different mindset that says, hey, we can make money and create value from this stuff. It's not a bad thing. I, I love that. Big data is an opportunity, right? For all decades, all we've been yeah. talking about is, oh, I got all this data. I can't find anything. I can't find emails. I can't manage this stuff. And you're saying we got to flip our mindset. Data is making money. So when you go into one of these industries and you meet a big data team, you know, more data is a good thing the more the better. Um, yes, they want better, faster storage just so they can get more data. Um, the tools are more of the self-service variety. You don't go to the high IT priests and ask for a report or an application. It's about empowering and enabling these knowledge workers to find new insights in their information. Uh, the funding model is all about creating new value as opposed to running the business as usual. And for those of us who've been in IT for such a long time, we got into it because we thought it was really cool stuff, we could like, change the world. Uh, I think Pat said it best, you know, big data can change the world. It can improve healthcare, it can improve energy, it can improve all these things we care about as social issues. Many of the answers have to do with using data more the intelligently. The number one social issue today um, is the PlayStation Network is down. And you know, no that's comment. a social game, everyone's playing it. But that's a cloud issue, right? So we were talking earlier about mm -hmm. the phenomenon, Chuck, in the world today, and that is, is two there's two real worlds colliding. It's the, the sandbox of entrepreneurship and innovation, you know, with Hadoop and application yep. development that's out there, and it's really fostering innovation. So there's it is. A real, and it's still an open book at this point. The future is unwritten, and there's new stuff happening. And then you got cl clients, and your clients want to go to the OpEx benefits of the cloud, yep. and are racing there, and what you're seeing is a, a fail in the system. Amazon crashed. Uh, big news with Amazon going down, which is you know public cloud, but granted, Quora was mm -hmm. down, a lot of these apps that kind of moved into scale, people were upset. Oh so yeah. That highlighted the fact that, okay, we got to get serious. So people are really thinking about that bridge that they have to cross, mm -hmm. who do they cross with? Obviously you guys are positioning EMC to be that vendor. Um, but you got to play nicely. You got to play nicely in the sandbox. The green plum guy's got to come in there and, and play with Hadoop. Uh, we'll ask so you're talking about a lot of important issues here. Uh, you know, what I learned from the Amazon experience was the need for good governance. You know, some people saw Amazon fail and it was like, yeah, okay, we've got our plan, we're ready to go. Other people were absolutely shocked that a IT service provider could have a bad day. They didn't have a plan B or plan C. And what I see with my customers who are moving to these external cloud services is they're doing it with open eyes. They're doing it with good governance. They want to remain in control. They're very careful about the workloads they put out there and take by. But let's say we get all through this. It's now two or three years from now. We've virtualized infrastructure. We can consume cloud. We're reasonably comfortable about it. What do we want to point all of that at? And I think that came out in both Joe's and Pat's presentation is big data is how we create value from this stuff. 
So you listen to today's cloud tracks about saving money and better IT and IT as a service. All that's great. But at some point we get past all of that and we say, how are we going to take all this great technology and find the next drug or, or figure out how to consume energy more efficiently? And that's where so many of us get excited about big data. It's creating new forms how of value from this stuff. How do you, how do you view, and, and obviously EMC is going to wrestle with this question, is the, the, how do you not foreclose innovation at the same time foster innovation while delivering production level scale value? I'll give you an example. Um, take a look at what the Green Plum guys are doing. So for example, you can go to Green Plum's community and download a free community version of all the Green Plum tools. The visualization tools, the database, open source, click twice, download it, have a nice day. But we're very clear, not for production environments. So there's an innovative part where you want to create environments where people can play with this stuff without having to execute a large license agreement and a big IT decision. Okay, now you're ready to go to production. Would you like to have dedicated infrastructure for that? There's a Green Plum data computing appliance. How about a compatible service provider? Maybe you don't want to own the infrastructure, you want to rent it. So I think the trick is, as people start exploring big data, showing them different and different consumption models that not only meet their economic requirements, but also their governance and trust requirements without having to front end load of that. Typically in IT, when you had a good idea with big data, you had to start with a big checkbook and an IT staff. We are meeting people who are producing amazing things from their existing data that's causing this entrepreneurship thing to tick off in large organizations and say, hey, we can do more, and we can do it in a way that doesn't require you know, a $5 million commitment on day one. So, so John, I think it's a good point. So John, I love the, I love the fact that EMC is actually making an announcement in Hadoop today, because this could have just been you know, big data, big data, big data. Keep saying big data, and, yeah. and eventually the world will associate us with big data. Say it um, often enough, people will believe you. Right, yeah. and, that, and that's actually <laughs> good marketing sometimes. That's right. Yeah. And you, you yeah, got a big Luke Lonergan last like night. Luke Lonergan last night was talking to me, and he was very adamant. And then, and Bill Cook came over. We had a very intimate conversation. You know, Joe Tucci was watching us. I'm like, hmm, what are these guys talking about? But, but I said, there's a holy war opportunity that could be avoided. But, you have to avoid this holy war around Hadoop and just say, hey, it's, value creation. It's there. So let's take Hadoop as an example. Yeah. Great open source technology, but it's also great open source technology. Yeah. Got to go to the site, download it, compile it, support it. Uh, you want high availability, sorry, you're going to have to do that yourself. You want enterprise class support, sorry, you're going to have to do that yourself. You want to size the infrastructure, sorry, you're going to have to do that yourself. So what we saw the opportunity is take this great open source distro and actually commercialize it so you can consume it for enterprise purposes. Um, not everybody is there yet, but it's nice to know that if you're getting started with Hadoop and just exploring with it, that if you find something of value, yeah, there's a vendor who can kind of work this up and make it as robust and as predictable as it's the early other enterprise too, class I mean, it's early. Pat Gelsinger would say, you know, these are markets, decisions. It's not about current product, but about, you know, to me, my analysis is that EMC is basically making a game statement. Like, we're getting into this market. Yeah. So it's not so much speeds and feeds right now, and we'll see how you guys play that out in terms of technology contribution to the <laughs> Apache Foundation. But, you know, but that's an issue. And I it think is. you guys will figure it out. Hopefully it won't be a holy war around, you know, who's going to land grab for Hadoop. Well, but this is a big signal to the market, though, right? It basically EMC, because EMC could have, could have done that without coming out with its own go, 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 go back 10 years. Let's talk about the Linux distros. How yeah, many Linux right. distros are out there? And you, as a customer, have a wide choice of whose distro, yeah. what kind of support environment. To, at least from my perspective, we still have as much innovation going on in the Linux distro world as we yeah. ever had. We just have a variety of consumption options yeah. depending it's on not what about you want to do. Well, but it's not about the competition because ever, all the press will talk about the competition with Cloudera. Cloudera is number one. And we'll talk about it too. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's about distribution. I mean, it, everyone should come out their own version of Hadoop and compete on value. Well, on but, value, right. But, but, but to, the, to your point, Chuck, uh, the, 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 the corollary is how many of those distributions have a $9 billion market cap? One. Right, one. Okay, right. and so this to me is a signal to the marketplace that EMC is saying, you know what? This well, is Yahoo not just a fad. This just is a continued. serious business, and we're going to essentially validate that this is a serious business. It is. And I think you're But I think the end right. state ends up looking like the Linux market is today. There's a couple right. of big distros. Right. Um, there's all sorts of little ones that do clever things. Yeah. Um, but most yeah. enterprises t tend to go to, you know, Suzy and tend to go to Red Hat. Right. You, you guys not like money. And well, early on, though, it didn't take that crumb. distribution when it was developing. The trajectory of the Linux market early on was, and Hadoop's still vulnerable. So there's a lot of politics going on in the Hadoop world, as you know. But, but 
it's still a little let's be early. Honest. Hadoop is just another tool in the tool belt. Yeah. It is yeah. not the answer to everything. If you saw Pat's presentation, there's a stack there, right? You need some enabling technology, you need some great scalable decision support databases, you need some great analytic tools, you need to collaborate and present the data, and in that schema, Hadoop is just another component in the stack. And I would bet you, a year from now, we're talking about the next thing that you know people are very, very interested in, and I could offer up some buzzwords, but I could see a position where more and more of these open source technologies become candidates for big data analytics, and they're looking to vendors to commercialize them. Today's darling is Hadoop. Um, it may not be the same a year from now. We may be looking <laughs> at something else that we're all very intrigued with. Right, right. Now, we also heard about Project Lightning. Oh, if you're a storage geek, this is a big deal. Well, I have the question for you. Isn't the best I.O. no I.O.? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll just send all the computers home. We don't yes. have to do anything today. Um, what is Project Lightning? So, who wants to tell us, Chuck? Well, very cool. In a nutshell, um, we all probably realize that we're going through a transition from disk to flash. And as flash prices come down, we see less and less disk being used, more and more flash. But the trick has been, how do you get the application and the data close to each other? Historically, we've had the application on a server and the storage over here on a storage network, separated by a wire. The premise behind um, Project Lightning is we can put storage flash on the server and intelligently cache data in and out of it. Um, if you remember back for uh, the DAS versus SAN arguments, there's one school of thought that says you need to have little disk drives, another school of thought that you had to have SAN. We're not going to go down that religious war this time. The answer is going to be yes. There are some environments where you have a lot of compute and a little bit of data. It makes sense to locate the data on the server in flash cache. There are other environments, and I think they tried to show this on stage, where hey, I've got a little bit of compute and a whole lot of data. Better to bring the vMotion, the uh, compute environment, close to the storage array. So what we're basically saying is that we need to redrive the boundaries between what is server and what is storage. Storage can live on the server if we can intelligently use it. Certain server workloads may make sense to relocate to a storage device and run the virtual machine. So again, we didn't announce the product today. Um, you can't go buy it. As I like to joke, it's made out of unobtainium today. Um, but, at, but very quickly, we have this history of turning our ideas into products. Um, demand right. is showing up in these environments that need very, very fast I.O. And again, the idea of locating the data in Flash close to the server environment is very attractive to these people. Probably familiar with Fusion I.O. and Violin. A little bit. So Dave, someone wrote today, storage is sexy. Um, That's your line, I stole that from last year. So, oh, yeah, so Chuck, so. you just wrote a blog <laughs> post. <laughs> it, 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 he it, just wrote a blog post that says, storage is sexy again. So that was last year. This is even more sexier. It's porn this year. Yeah, um, it's getting sexier. If that's so, so you wrote a post Vegas, basically so. um, saying Flash is great in yep. your blog post. Um, some people are construing this as a supporting argument against Steve Duplessis, for Steve Duplessis' argument um, for Fusion I.O. So it's Actually, I think Steve Duplessis came out on the side that says, hey, just putting flash on a card and sticking it in a server is not going to be enough. And uh, I don't know which side of the argument it was. <laughs> Regardless of who said what, we think that there's an opportunity to have some parts of the storage stack and flash on the server some parts of the storage stack on storage arrays and the intelligence to move them back and forth. I think that last statement you made is the interesting part to me, is the intelligence to move it back and forth because you're talking the the about- day, this turns out to be software. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you're talking about fast. Right. You know, and you're right, EMC has a track record of announcing products and then delivering. Now you've- On a good day. On a good day. <laughs> um, and, and you know, EMC's smart. Oh, thank you. And uh, it, it sees the trends in the marketplace. It obviously wants a piece of that pie. And so you've made this announcement that to me, what's interesting is is fast. Now, I think the the I think they're both right. By the way, well, because, because again, I, I, I don't see this as a as a Fusion I/O killer per se, because Fusion I/O has some other software technologies that eliminate things like the SCSI stack. So I mean, I sort of interested yeah, in your I mean, thoughts. the difference is between a product and a capability. Um, it, you know, back in the beginning of 2008, we were the first vendor to say, here's these flash drives, they go into a big symmetrics. We started talking about software that could locate things back and forth. Mm -hmm. We said the promise would be it can run a lot faster and a lot cheaper, but that was all kind of within the array. All we're really doing now is are taking that discussion, saying let me draw a boundary through the server and have that exact same discussion as before. Um, some of the storage lives uh, in the server. Dave, just to clarify, uh, my position on the whole Fusion I.O. debate with Duplessis and others is simply that um, and the Wall Street Journal came out with an article that was, you know, you know, anti-Fusion I.O. And everyone was dissing Fusion I.O. because they have Facebook as a client. And I think everyone wants Facebook as a client. We know other vendors are being booted out of there uh, because they don't have that robust uh, feature set. So all I was saying was, I'm not dissing 
uh, Fusion IO because they have Facebook as a client. Yeah, if they lose their client, then it might not be worth as much. But by my the way, argument was just you know my my argument yeah. was there are going to be more environments that look like Facebook. That was my uh, point. So that's the debate. That's um, and, and that's an interesting. Uh, but two that's years validated ago, by by EMC guys, today. Guys, two years ago we were arguing about Google IT. We're right. all obsessing around how Google does IT. We all need to that's have right. IO. Um, this year it's Facebook IT. You know, is Facebook the model for IT and large scalable web applications? The answer is yes and no. Will you see more environments that look like Facebook? Yes. Will the vast majority of IT environments look like what Facebook? I don't does? buy that. I don't buy that argument because Google's a search engine. It's not a not an enterprise app. I think Facebook has data dimensions that look like an enterprise. Mobility, the mobile's a very big app. You have latency issues around yep, application yep. tie-in and commodity infrastructure. So if SSD is a caching layer initially, yep. I think it just morphs into the cloud meets big data. So to mm -hmm. me, Facebook's a cloud app yep. with one app, yep. Facebook. So I look at Facebook very clearly as what how Hadoop plays in there as possibly where the data centers are going to move to. And you guys have the Vplex vision, which quite frankly is a yep. great vision. Let's yeah. talk about another cloud app. Um, let's take Smart Grid. So we have a bunch of utilities for the first time have billions of IP addresses showing up and saying what's going on with power consumption. You got to capture that stuff. Um, it's not enough just to cache it and serve it up to the next guy who wants to see a picture. It's a cloud app, it's scalable, yeah. but its IO profile is very different than what Facebook has to do. So I think these are all interesting. Um, people will argue with me that Twitter IT looks very different than Facebook IT. <laughs> Twitter has no short IT. Messages. <laughs> yeah, Twitter well, has yeah, no bad data day. But We're here with Chuck Hollis, a uh, legendary blogger, a lot of fans out there know Chuck. Chuck's been around, he's a figure. Now he's a somewhat a celebrity at EMC. We were talking about this. How do you feel about that, by the way? That you're, um, I mean, you're, well, you're a very big authority in, at EMC and in the industry, but I now you're I don't know if I'm 100% figure. comfortable with it. You know, I started this blogging thing, I started talking to people, and all of a sudden I started getting some notoriety, and I'm like, Boy, you know, something's wrong here. Either I'm smarter than I thought I was, or they're, or they're, they're not that discerning out there. But I think I've kind of evolved into an interesting role where you can just kind of converse with people on topics like this and create alternate point of views. I don't think anybody has the right answer. But what you can bring to the table is good arguments, good perspectives, and let the best ideas win. You know, I think Joe said it on stage. Every aspect of IT is changing today. Infrastructure, yep. applications, user experiences, consumption models through the cloud. And anybody who shows up and says, hey, I've got this all figured out, you know. You know, EMC's got a very impressive management team, I got to say, I mean, across the board, even working with us with social media, they get that the world's changing at the end user level. And then backing into the data center. I think that is a mindset that translates pretty well. I mean, can you guys carry the day? Obviously, you own VMware, that's looking good. Can you get into the- The VMware cloud? thing worked out pretty well. You got some great yeah. acquisitions. Yep. Yep. I mean, I think, you know. Name a better acquisition in the history of the computer industry. You can't, you know. I mean, we, well, I promise them that name a close second. Again. Then once you go do it again. Hey, that uh, works HP out bought Compact. Yeah. Hey, seriously, <laughs> what? HP bought Compact. HP bought Compact, okay. <laughs> That's like the, is that the, the uh, IBM PricewaterhouseCoopers, PwC. That's up there, but not nowhere even close to the value. That certainly doesn't created. have the caught the right wave at the right time type data of Data domain was a damn good one too. I mean, yeah. yeah, but just in terms of value creation, domain. I mean, it's absolutely incredible so, to me. Interestingly enough, we have a fair number of people knocking on our door saying, how did you guys put together this whole M&A strategy thing? Because if you look at the track record in tech, it hasn't been really good. You know, how many good companies you know, get swallowed up and you never see them, their people, their brand again? I don't want to name names because a lot of them are our yeah. partners. Um, but there's a lot of M&A that goes down that you wonder. The integration is the challenge. I mean, you guys have done thinking? successful well, integrations. Well, you know, EMC wasn't always good at uh, M&A. Oh, no. right? EMC's first acquisition was Epic. Right? I don't even I mean, want to talk Bob, about that. Bob, Bob DeVoe's company right? it was a disaster. The first two or three were terrible. And then all of a sudden, I mean, you, Joe you, came along. And, and that's why I, I, uh, I think there's hope for NetApp. You know, my I really do. My view is that Joe realized that you <laughs> well, had to NetApp's get good NetApp's a good at it. niche storage vendor. I mean, yeah. I got to say, yeah. NetApp, um, Val would argue that, I, you know, I guess they're a niche player. Um, well, but it doesn't happen overnight. So, I don't want to pick on NetApp here, but um, name an acquisition they've done that's worked well. They're not really pro-acquisition. I mean, we, we sat down and with... And I think it's part of it is because they've got some, you know, DeCrew, gone. Topio, gone. Bycast, I'm still looking for right, it. Bycast, you don't know. Spinnaker, Onaro, okay. Um, know, we'll see about our core. But I would argue, that not, this is not just picking on NetApp, this is any IT company. You've got to build a competency, an organization, it a function. It takes a long time, yeah. And it takes a long time yeah. to get good at it. It's like any other, you know, varsity sport. You don't just show up and play one day. And uh, again, I think there's a lot of opportunity to do more here. But, but this is important because... Oracle, great at acquisitions. Yeah. IBM, great at acquisitions. Yeah. EMC, great at acquisitions. Yeah. 
You know, HP pretty good. You know, yeah, getting, there. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, getting there. You have to be. HP's been, been pretty good lately. After yeah, the yeah. compact it, acquisition, they got a lot of yes, scale. It, and by the way, you lay down a lot of money for something like three par. You got to make it work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a certain I mean, that, look, know, that looks good. You got EMC go to me yeah. is one of the the leaders in the industry. I mean, fifty nine billion dollar market cap. We've said, you know, hundred billion dollar market cap within two thousand fifteen. Looks like we're yeah. on track for that. You're right there, and acquisition prowess is one of the key attributes of those companies. Um, the other thing I think we bring to the table is we get most of our good ideas from our customers. Because of our customer profile, we'll talk to them saying, hey, we found this great technology, it does this, it solves this problem, and a lot of our M&A ideas literally come from our customers who are using these technologies. So we do our own screening, we do a lot of our own investments, but I can point to named acquisitions where it was a couple of customers who came to us and said, this stuff is cool, you got to go take a look at I, it. I like see, how you guys, I mean, I was talking to Howard Elias, you guys eat your own dog food, and, you, and I think that gives you an edge on the solution side. When you test stuff internally, and you've got a culture where, you know, IT guys usually have a gun to the head, you know, execute, and then if anything goes wrong, they get fired. But you guys are bringing in virtualization, you got Green Plum in there. Mm -hmm. We're here, and you guys doing a lot of new stuff. So I think that gives you an edge well, uh, on so the technology side. So one part that I point side. to is the customers. The other thing I want to highlight is our own IT organization. You know, three years ago, they made a decision to go cloudify their operation. It was one thing to talk about the dream, it's another thing to live it. And we learn more about, not the technology, but the change in the organization, the operational processes, the new skill sets, new governance models. It's one thing to say, here's a bunch of technology, go build yourself a cloud. It's another thing to look at what has to happen from the organization and human capital side to make that reality. As we learned from that, we understood the best way to help our customers was, yeah, okay, great technology and great partners. Okay, here are the new skill sets, here are the new roles, here are the new processes you're going to need to implement to really be an internal IT as a service provider. And you well, don't get that just by, you know, living in the technology domain. How do you feel as an EMC employee who's been through the, you know, the road? Mm -hmm. You've traveled the EMC path. Yeah, living the dream, baby. And you're living, <laughs> <laughs> look, you're a celebrity, you've got you know, a huge audience. Now seriously, EMC has totally transformed from a you know, big gear, iron, storage mm -hmm. vendor to information infrastructure, big data cloud. I mean, you're growing up, as Joe Tucci says, the, the smallest of the bigs and growing. Um, it's not over, we're that? still humble. Um, every day we wake up, we look at the opportunity and say, you know, we're very happy about what we've done, but gosh, there's so much to go do. Um, you know, for every idea that you see us go do, there's like 10 things we really wish we could go do. So, you know, we all, part of our ethos is, you know, take a little success for about a microsecond of what you've done, and then get on to the next task. What gets you well, excited the most right now, in terms of out there? I mean, what's um, on the table, what you're cooking up, and what you see? Can um, you talk about what gets you excited right now? You know, for me, it's, it's two things, and I think, you know, I'm not just being the corporate line. You know, cloud for me is the transformation of the IT industry. We're restructuring every part of it and the people involved around new skills. All right, now we've restructured IT as a service. What do we want to go do with it? We want to create new value for information. That's big data. And I got to tell you, we got two or three years left of just investing in technologies around this before we can look at you and say, yeah, we've got this all figured out. Yeah. And that's what kind of gets you up in the morning is the dynamic of change. Well, to me, the really interesting, we were talking that's about EMC good. before and the whole transformation. I mean, EMC's got this legacy business you know, the, 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 the innovator's dilemma, and you're a disruptor, right? You're coming at this. Now, I think one of the areas that you, you need to do a better job, uh, I'd love your thoughts on this, is just selling to the CIO, selling to the line of business. You know, we're going to be at Sapphire next week. You go to Sapphire, you meet a lot of application heads, a lot of line of business heads, a lot of CIO types. It's the business crowd, so and that's not EMC's traditional it crowd. It is isn't. it isn't. Um, if you think about it, most IT leaders were put in their place to run business as usual. Do what you did last year, plus or minus Make it incremental, right. They right. were not basically risk takers, and yeah. let's plug it in and see what happens. Right. Okay, as Joe said, infrastructure's changing, application is changing, you know, user experiences are changing, consumption models are changing. Also, that IT leader is being measured on how quickly they can implement changes in this new paradigm, and less on the measurement system that they had two or three years ago. Now, if you're a career IT leader, this is not a pleasant experience. You know, you've got 20 years of your career where you're being measured to do one thing, yeah. and now all of a sudden everything's changing. You're on you're Craigslist being looking to for go jobs. Do something else. <laughs> and where I think we've done very well is to be empathetic with that need to change. Um, we're offering new ideas, new ways of doing things. We're not the guys that got them into the trouble they were in. And it's not uniform throughout the IT spectrum, but the people we tend to meet are into this accelerated change thing. And uh, again, you really have to meet these guys to see kind of the, you know, the, the implicit fear in their eyes that you know, the game is changing yeah, yeah. quickly. They want to lead, they want to do the right thing for their business, but the rules have changed so quickly. I think, quickly. The, I think, I think the, the enabling for yeah. those people. Yeah. Um, I, I, 
I, I personally, I feel like there's a little bit more work to do there to get oh, you yeah. know high, higher up the level. I mean, what else do you think you have to do do better? Um, you know, we always can do more. I love what Jeremy has done with the marketing and the branding. I was always frustrated personally that we had a great story, but you had to sit there and listen to us for six hours to understand it. Hey, you're um, talking a lot. Okay, you just you know, put on an ad. Um, <laughs> you know, people Simplify it. big data. Chuck's yeah. done talking. Thank you. Um, Did you see the streets? You know, people get snark in our business about advertising and marketing. They say, you know, but it actually works. It actually opens people's minds up to what we're yeah. doing. So we find it a lot easier to have the discussions we want to have based on the face of the marketing. So, yes, you know, we might laugh at the Mini Coopers and all that. People pay attention to that stuff. And the tape ball? You like which, the tape ball. Which we use, by the way, in a blog post because I got a picture next to the tape ball and Google backup yeah. failed yeah. because of tape. So we whipped out that No, picture. not because of tape, but anyway, good story. And it was tape they saved them. Tape. Right? <laughs> tape saved them. That was classic. Right? Oops. Oops. <laughs> hey, it was still it was good theater for the blog, that's for sure. But, um, you know, the marketing helps a lot just because it makes it so much easier to then have those discussions. And, uh, you know, the, as to your point, the company's evolving. And people want to have dialogues around transformation and change these days as opposed to do exactly what you did last year, 5 to 10% better. Um, and that's what, you asked me what gets me out of bed in the morning? That gets me out of the bed. Well, this yeah. is John. This is what it's interesting yeah. about, you know, we're talking about Hadoop and the Holy Wars and so forth. I mean, EMC's marketing prowess, that just lends credibility to that market. And then, you know, talk about, you talked well, about I mean, Cloudera. EMC, I mean, EMC. Cloudera's got no marketing, in my opinion. I mean, Cloudera, Cloudera lacks Cloudera, marketing. Cloudera right? does not have strong marketing. Yeah, so I, I mean, mean the, the old expression when I worked well, at HP was, honest. if they made you know, fish, it would be got, cold, dead fish. I don't fish. know, how many thousands of direct reps? We've got an ecosystem of partners. We've got service providers who go stand this stuff up. You, you I mean, do VCE, you've got, you got 900 got people on it. They could we, kill I mean, Hadoop instantly. In fact, I they mean, should just buy Cloudera and get it over with. Uh, you know, come on, EMC. I don't know about what are you that, doing? but you know, size and scale actually helps with a lot of these new technologies yeah. where you can take a new idea, put it on a working machine, and bring it to a lot are of Are you people. making that call? EMC I, buys Cloudera? I think, well, I Yahoo, think so. or, Yahoo or Yahoo, now that's Yahoo or Cloudera. EMC I think connecting EMC with Yahoo. One. That well, yeah. would be a great play. Chuck talked about this yeah. earlier. I innovation, will say, I will if, say. You, if you foreclose innovation by playing, pissing in the sandbox, as they say, um, that's where all creation and entrepreneurship is yeah. going on. It just, it just pollutes the ecosystem. I think, Pat, we've heard from EMC, fostering an ecosystem is number one priority. And yeah. if it's this early in the game, it might be really good for Well, let me give you an example of that. You probably noticed we have a data scientist summit. Yeah, These we heard guys, about that could care less whether it's Cloudera, Blaudera, Hadoop, Badoop, you know, that's not really of interest to them. What is interesting is having access to the data they need, using it productively, and creating value. So one of the reasons we have the data scientists here is nobody really has a dialogue with who are you guys, what do you need, and what would make your life easier, as opposed to us as technologists arguing, you know, is it vanilla, is it chocolate, is it strawberry? At the end of the day, there's a guy there who's trying to extract value of that data. And I think you're going to see more of this going forward, yeah. where we actually reach out to the communities that are forming that want to use these technologies, as opposed to the debates we usually have amongst ourselves. Yeah, but can you say the same thing about EMC, Chuck? Well, you know, at the end of the day, the guy who buys the storage technology doesn't care so much about the storage technology, he cares about you know, the business outcomes, the relationship that he has. Well, sometimes he cares about the storage. I okay. mean, it can get really religious, but I understand well, your yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, since we're not being religious, I thought I'd yeah. throw that I'm out I'm sorry, there. I don't like your fiber <laughs> channel. <laughs> you know, I think the interesting thing about Red Hat is that, you know, um, Benchmark, um, who's con contemplating financing Yahoo, um, and the Yahoo spin out of Hadoop, which is being discussed, um, was the backer of Red well, Hat. John, something I've learned about you is to follow your predictions, because I track you. <laughs> and uh, your batting average is pretty good. So I I, I'm, not, good. I'm not routinely dismissing <laughs> everything you're saying I have anymore. a great batting average. <laughs> he is good, he is good. I'm He's a good stock picker. I bet on the right horses, and Chuck, you, I, will, I bet on you every time. You're impressive, um, very candid. You like to get into an argument when, when it's the right time. You're not a bully. Uh, you're a high, high caliber individual. We like well, working you. with you. I enjoy working with you guys. It's great. I love thank what you, you guys are doing here at EMC World. Uh, I don't know how this all came to be, but I hope we can do more of it in the future. So yeah, we hope so, too. That. So uh, right. we'll be at uh, SAP Sapphire next week, so look for us there. Okay. And Chuck, well, I'm sure we'll see you around. Always, yeah. uh, always welcome on theCUBE.